Right, we've arrived day of the game. Celtic return back to European action this evening. We go to Copenhagen, mm -hmm. um, 5.55 kickoff in Denmark. Uh, we'll just talk a little bit about what we can you know, expect from um, the Danes, for how we think the game will go, what team we think Neil Lennon will field. Will it be 3-5-2, 4-2-3-1, something else? Who knows? Um, before we start talking, uh, I'll just quickly put a, a wee mention out for us on Twitter. We're at 67 Hail Hail. If you want to give us a follow there, loads of various stuff, the videos, stuff, articles from the website um, and some nice wee tweets as well. We're also on Facebook, similar kind of thing there. Just search for 67 Hail Hail there. Um, and if you've not yet subscribed to the channel, you can do that on the page you're on at the moment. Um, we'll also say we're doing all this chat just before the, the pre-match press conferences have happened. So of if course, Neil Lennon yep. says anything outrageous or you know, has ruled any players out, we're completely ignorant to it. We're recording this on Monday. I don't think that's much of a secret, to be honest, because nah. we're wearing the same clothes as we Sadly. were for the rest Not of the that episode. Man so, um, didn't bring a change of wardrobe today. But anyway, let's get into it. Copenhagen, um, what we think in the head of this tie, it's the first, you know, we've been in the, the last 32 a yep. few times now, but this is certainly the most winnable tie we've had. 100%. Um, Copenhagen so far in Europe have reached the last 32, not impressively, might I say. They were up against Lugano, I believe, uh, Dinamo Kiev and Malmo. Malmo. Did in the groups, did. they did not beat Malmo or Dinamo Kiev. They only beat Lugano twice. Never um, heard of Lugano. Me neither. That was uh, to look them up. 3-1-1 um, draws. Two against Kiev, one against Malmo, and then lost 1-0 to Malmo in the final game, but still managed to progress. They haven't scored over one goal in a group stage game, but they also haven't conceded over one goal in a group stage game. They are struggling to make an impression in this competition, I think. Um, you don't want to dismiss them um, because so often when teams are maybe even in a crisis, they sort of turn their season on against us. We've seen it in the past. But this is so winnable. It really mm. is. Uh, um, we should not be going to Copenhagen with any fears. Um, again, Got to go and respect the dangers they do have. We we'll understand they're really effective from the cross ball, and that could be a perhaps an area of concern that we mm -hmm. have. Considering you could rhyme off the goals we've lost for cross balls, um, but why should we not be going to Denmark looking to win the game by a goal or two? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be really interested to see how the game pans out, and I think we might have more of the ball than some might think. Mm. It's interesting when I mean, you're talking about Copenhagen there, and we're certainly not too worried about them given their recent form. On the flip side, you know, David and Hamish in Denmark doing this from a Copenhagen point of view must be looking at Celtic and going, what a team. Because we're top of the league, we've won all these games, and then you look back to the tail end of last year at our Europa League group campaign, and let's not beat around the bush, the group we were in is a hundred times harder than the group. Exactly, that was a pathetic yeah. group they were in. And we've taken, what, 13 points from our first five games. They must be looking at us and going, shit, we're in for something here. They're probably looking and maybe think we're better than we are. But, I mean, I think, um, I don't think they'll look at the game and think they're favourites. I mean, they, they'll probably see us and think that we should be going through. Yeah, um, I agree with that. We're the seeded team for a start. We've got the second leg at home. We're the better team. We've got the better players. Um, they lost 1-0 on Friday, it's worth pointing out. Second yep. bottom team, Esbjerg, they, they also missed a penalty, Esbjerg, so they should have won by probably two or more goals. Um, they are four points behind Mithailand or Michelin, whatever you call them. Um, I've, and they've played a game more, so they're well adrift. And Michelin with a team, let's not forget, that Rangers, who G gave a do and diddies, I. won 7-3 again. 7-3. <laughs> gave, gave a do and I. that not fill you with confidence? It does. I mean, there's a lot of things that fill me with confidence with this tie. Lennon seems to have done his homework. He's already said that he's been to Portugal, sent some, well, he's not been to Portugal, he sent some scouts to Portugal um, to he, have a look at Braga them. Braga or something? Um, <laughs> well, they had their training camp in Portugal. Oh, did, did you know, know that, Hamish? Did your research, son. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he watched them in this Atlantic Cup they were in and he uh, also sent someone uh, over to the game on Friday as well so he should have the lowdown on them um, which is nothing less than you'd expect in fact Fisher is obviously a big name it's sort of been hitting the headlines that he's going to miss the first leg reportedly he might be fit for the second but even then Fisher um, this season I've got his stats here four goals and nine assists and that's in 30 senior appearances not jaw-dropping, I'll put it that way, and he hasn't bagged a goal or an assist in the Europa League. Um, did get one in qualifying, but he's not done anything in the group's notable. So that's not the be-all and end-all for Copenhagen that he's out. You know, they still have uh, the front pairing of, what's he, Satirio, is that his name? 
Piero Soterio. You're the researcher here. Is that, you know, you know how to be look. Well, anyway, whatever. Um, that's and Doy, and Doy's the other striker. He plays alongside. I think Soterio is a top goal scorer with 13. It's not a lot of goals for this stage in the season either. Hamish, we've if probably we're got being four quite or five honest. that are in that Aye. tally. You know, Forrest, Christy, Edward, El Yunusi probably all have that for but us. At the same time, you know the phrase stats can be the biggest liar at times yeah. in football. Um, but from what we have to go on, we should be going there and winning the game. We shouldn't be going there and saying to ourselves, right, a score draw today, boys. You know, I uh, think that was my next question. What, what's a good result? A win. A score draw is a good result. Draws a, a draws a decent a result. Score draw a score draw is a decent result. Because now now is a wee bit, you're always funny A score about draw that. was also a decent result in Cluj. I'm not alarmed at Parkhead. So oh, I thought you meant in the, the Europe in the Champions League you're talking about. No. I thought you meant the Europa <laughs> League. A score draw was also a good result reserves. against Cluj. We ended up going out. If we were to get True. the win in Copenhagen, I think that would probably rule out a comeback at Parkhead. Um, but it's nice having that fallback at Parkhead, isn't it? Cause it is, even I. Even if you get and beat, I, d- I don't think we'll lose, but see, even if a horrible defeat like 2 0 or something, which would be a terrible result, right. you'd still probably fancy well, that's it. That's isn't it? You just get the one goal at Parkhead and the, the place, place is, is rocking. Is, so. is rocking aye. Right, let's um, can, should we move on to the teams. Is that I'll all right? Go for it on you yeah. go. Um, so, in term, terms of Celtic, I think we've both done a wee bit of, kind of stuff on the team we think will play. Big question, obviously, that all the, the fans will be asking is it going to be 3 5 2 or 4 2 3 1? I know we disagree on this. Mm-hmm. You think it's going to be. Um, the three-five-two that we've played in all nine of our games so far this year, I think you'll go back to the four-two-three-one. Okay. But I, I can totally see the merit in going back to four-two-three-one with the problems that the um, likes Aberdeen gave us with a three-five-two, um, especially with uh, Copenhagen's main threat coming from the direct ball. It also makes sense to cover yourself down the flanks with two players each. I just feel when you've played nine games in a row with a certain formation, I know Neil switched it. Yesterday for the, or well, sorry, in the game against Aberdeen, um, I, I just don't think it's worth changing. I don't know, I don't know why you would break up the partnership up top, which is giving us so many goals. That's almost if we're going to Copenhagen and, and for me admitting that they are the better team nearly. Um, no, nah, I would go for three five two and trust our own attacking ability to do the job in Denmark. Um, so that that's the team I would go for. Uh, that's the system I would go for. I think Neil might end up doing a four-two-three-one, but uh, change your tune now. You know, the minute, but, the, minute the camera me, goes on, you uh, start well, quaking. Well, I think Neil might go a four-two-three-one. Mm. For me, I would do three-five-two. Right, I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I don't, I don't see why you would change it. I, I I just feel that four-two-three-one gives us a wee bit more security in defence, and I also think we can break just as quickly as we would, you know, with, with the two wingers. I think it suits a few players. I think James Forrest is a better player when he's playing in the four two three one. I still don't feel he knows totally what he's doing so, playing so, in a three five two. So what's your team with a four two three one? And I and I'll tell you where I differ from it then. Right, so so Fro- Forrester's obviously going to be in nets. I think we'll nah. go <laughs> <laughs> Scott Bain. Um I think we'll go with a back four. Uh, already I'm kinda questioning myself. I think Frimpong will play just because he's the best option we've got right back. Lennon's comments on Jozo Simunovic that he made, I don't know if anyone saw them before the game against Aberdeen when he said something along the lines of, you know, Simunovic is out because he can't play three games, three games in a week. And so that leaves me thinking, play. could he play and could put Ayer to right back? Because Ayer scored for right back and, and Frimpong's not played a lot. But I just feel he might go with Frimpong, obviously Julian Ayer, and, and a big question mark over whether Taylor's fit or not. Well, I wouldn't throw Jeremy back in. Not yet. I, I know he's, he's sort of hinted at it on uh, social media as well, um, from Pong. But for me, he's, he's not played in... Is he picking the team now, from Pong? Eh? <laughs> he's just sort of, he, he sort of... I don't know, if you go and look at the post yourself, yeah. you know what I mean? But um, He's not played for four weeks. I would rather we had three towering centre-backs in to deal with our cross balls. Um, so I would omit from Pong from the team and I'd play the three centre-halves at the back. Um, if... It's going to be Simunovic, I think. And I would put Ayer and Julian in there. Um, then you'd have a midfield five. Who left th- back, Taylor? Have we got a left back? Aye, if he's fit. If he has any oh, fit, uh, if he has any fit, then I'm going to throw Johnny Hayes in there <laughs> down the left. That might not be too popular, but the midfield five kind of picks itself, mate. But it really does just now, so you'd know who I'd play there. Um, I'll say it anyway. Forrest, Cham, Brown, McGregor and uh, Taylor left wing back. So um, I've got obviously my twos, Brown and McGregor, and then my three in front of it. And again, I'm questioning myself. I had Forrest on the right, Christie in the middle, 
and El Yunusi on the left, and then I realised I've not got Olivier and Cham in there. And I know he's not played Olivier and Cham in the majority of our away games in Europe. He's been used as a sub. You think of like mm. Ren and obviously Lazio when he comes on as a sub and, and scores. But I just feel when Cham's playing too well to leave him out. Well, and I, the fact that El Yunusi hasn't started a game in so long, I think he might go Christie right and Cham middle, Forrest left. I, I that was in me. I was going to pick up, and there was El Yunusi. I mean. Do you know I've played a wee bit against Aberdeen if he was going to You'd say the about Frimpong. Would they both have played? Whether they, whether I both are new substitutes. Yeah. I, Christy down the right, I don't see him being effective. I, I, I don't. I, I just I, I think he struggles whenever he sort of... See, I'm going against there. everything I said in December because I was raging. And before the, the Rangers game that we lost, I wanted Lennon to play Johnson and put Christy back in the middle. But I'm just struggling. I think just the way it's injuries try, are. It's try, Cham's thrown himself right in. Ah, he's mix. got Cham's got to play for me, even though Aye, he was so poor on so Sunday. Or, or I could see him having a stormer in Denmark. He really could. Yeah, it's um, that kind of game, keeping yeah. the ball away from home. But I also think Christie. I just think he's got to play. I wouldn't mm. be raging if he plays Forrest right and El Yunusi, but it all depends on how El, El Yunusi plays. How I look at it, because if El Yunusi is not fit, because remember Hamden, remember he tried to force El Yunusi in the cup final against Rangers at Hamden, and he was shocking off by half time. So I don't want that to happen again with El Yunusi or if Frimpong. You, if, if you're uh, if you're Lennon though, do you not think switching back to the four two three one opens up a massive door for criticism if we get beat in Copenhagen? Uh, I mean, on the on the flip side, you could say playing three five two and support. I think I think if we uh, if we lose, we get criticised uh, anyway. I, I think mean, that's uh, just the. I just think that uh, when you're doing something, you're sticking to a formation that doesn't seem too broken. And I know we weren't great at Aberdeen, but you're not going to be great every game in any mm. formation. Um, I think the formation, the, the system, three five two system, isn't broken just now. Copenhagen for me, from what I gather, I could be totally wrong, but from what I gather, they don't seem good enough to be fearful of playing the formation. Um, yeah, so that's what I would go for. But I think Lennon might. Go with. You've yep. obviously got Griffiths and Edward up front. I do, I. I mean, what? Because Griffiths didn't score against Aberdeen, that should be him chucked. I mean, you I'm know, no I, saying that. No, I know, but that's the way some might perceive it. I mean, if Edward, you know, if Edward had the game Griffiths did, <laughs> you know, yeah. he would have got away with it a lot more. Um, Griffiths, for me, just comes across a wee bit aggressive just now. I think he's <laughs> looking for a fight occasionally. Um, I think not scoring does get to him a lot. I think it gets to him a wee bit more than it. It should do. Yeah. He's a great team contributor. I think he's gotten a, a lot more selfless. Um, and I just think it's a good partnership. But I, I, I think they've scored so many goals with them, both on the park. Not all of them being from Griffiths, of course. But he, he played a part in the opener, a very big part in yeah, the opener, but getting the better of McKenna. That, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd play Griffiths. Um, I'd put the arm around him, say, go out there and show what you can do in Europe. Um, he scored an Anderlecht, I remember that one. He scored in ground similar to Copenhagen. So, aye, I'd go for it. I'd go for 3-5-2, take the game to Copenhagen and see what they've got and watch them rip and stay shreds <laughs> on the counter, eh? Fantastic. I love it, yeah. Just have got Edward up front, obviously, on his own. Griffiths super sub off the bench. But great options we've got there as well. Really looking forward to the yes. game. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was maybe... When the league title was so close, or, or the league title race was so close, I was maybe a little bit apprehensive about wanting to, you know, put too much energy into this game because it was always the league being the priority. Yeah, Obviously, that is still the case, but I think the fact we've got this little margin now, I am really want to get my teeth into this Europa I League run. Agree, absolutely. I absolutely. I honestly fancy us to, to win this tie. I think we'll win it pretty comfortably. I think we'll win it by two or three goals. I know that's a massive statement, but I think why, we'll win this tie by two or three why goals. Why should we not be looking to beat Copenhagen by a couple of goals? Exactly. That's the question I would ask. Are we, are we really... <laughs> that much yeah sort of whipping boy at this group or exactly. at this stage so and then we get yeah, through it the next round it's a you know the seeding and all that's gone it's an I open see draw you, you see what you get make it braga you just want to get <laughs> really, um, I like that one but, you know we'll, we'll, we'll see aye. next round we'll see how we get and you can judge it for there but should be willing to beat Copenhagen by a couple I think fantastic if we've got any viewers out there who happen to be lucky enough to go off to the Danish aye. capital then we hope you enjoy yourself um, I've heard it's quite expensive over there, so you probably want to bring a bit of money with you. Um, but yeah, enjoy yourself. Obviously, be safe, all that kind of thing. Safe travels and enjoy the game. Hopefully, Celtic get a good result. Yourself. And if uh, they could probably sit and watch us in the plane, couldn't they? If they down, can you download videos and that? Oh God, I wouldn't even know, man. Brilliant. Anyway, if you've not yet subscribed, <laughs> give it a go. Sixty-seven Hail Hail on YouTube. This is like the twentieth time I've said this this week. Mm -hmm. Click subscribe. Boys v Blue Nose is a podcast we do. Click subscribe in that as well, please. Twitter, we're at 67 Hail Hail, and Facebook, 67 Hail Hail as well. It's quite easy. Just 
Aye. Search for 67 Hail Hail. Fantastic. David, thanks again for another week. Thanks We're back. Much. Next week, I think we'll have all three of us on. John will be joining me and you on next week, I believe, to chat hopefully about oh, beating aye. Copenhagen and all that. No, so here the day, no? Huh? John, no, here the day then? Nah. Well, evidently. Unless he's hiding uh, behind my chair well, or something, well, is he? I wasn't here last week, so. Right. Fantastic. David, thanks again. Thank you again for watching. We love um, all the support you've given us. Leave us comments, all that kind of stuff, and take care.